the Osceola <laughs> Township Special Budget Meeting to order. Roll call, please, Ms. Wool. Gardner. Here. Mr. Jenke. I'm here. Mr. Wareham. Here. Mr. Halkala. Here. Here. All five members of the Township Board are present. First item on our proposed agenda is Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone present would kindly rise, face the flag, and join us in the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We have a proposed agenda. Oh, I will make a motion to approve it as presented. Motion to approve the agenda for tonight's special budget meeting as presented. I'll Is there second. support? We have support. Is there any discussion, proposed additions, or deletions to the proposed budget for tonight's special meeting? Proposed agenda for agenda. Anything? Thank you. There are no items for the agenda for tonight's special meeting. No. Vote, please. All in favor of the motion to approve the agenda, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We have an agenda. Public comment. Anyone interested in offering comment for the board at this time, specific to the topic at hand, which is budget preparation for the coming fiscal year? Uh, please let us know. You'll be given up to three minutes. Identify yourself, and the time will begin. Hearing none, we'll close the public comment session. We will offer a second opportunity for public comment before we adjourn the meeting this evening. Budget work session. The intent of tonight's meeting is to begin the process of preparing the budgets for the township for the coming fiscal year, which begins on Friday, April 1st. Uh, tonight's meeting, uh, based on discussions we've had at previous meetings and dialogue amongst ourselves, is to begin the process by reviewing uh, and or proposing amendments to township fees, rates, rents, at all. Uh, some additional information has been attached to the agenda for reference. Uh, there is no particular order uh, for these things. I did come up with a worksheet, unfortunately. It's still on legal pad and frankly was working on it just minutes before the meeting uh, convened. So what I'm offering for your consideration this evening in your packets are a number of items where rates uh, perhaps need review, certainly need discussion, uh, and I think we can take them in any order that the board would like to proceed. That does not preclude discussion on our amendments or beginning to work on next year's budget, but I thought if we laid down uh, sort of a template about where we are with some of these items, it might be helpful going forward with budget preparation and revenue generation if deemed necessary by the board. Uh, let me give you a few examples of things. I started off on my worksheet with some miscellaneous costs, uh, ranging from what we charge for Freedom of Information Act materials Possibility of charging for the use of township property, such as parks, pavilions, at parks, and beaches, etc., uh, for special gatherings, and something uh, that might appear rather uh, mundane, but we do charge 25 cents per page for copies. And is that something that we would like to change? And then any other general fee or whatever not covered by ordinance or directive. I thought we'd start with uh, some basics and see if there's any interest in discussing them at this time. By way of example, uh, we have wondered about the copying fee, which is a quarter per page. And that would, of course, include information that's sought from the board, uh, perhaps under a FOIA request. And the general comment that uh, I have received at the office from several people is that other places that charge for copying, maybe we charge a quarter, but many of them, especially governmental type entities, charge somewhere in the neighborhood of a dime. And I'm not sure where we arrive at 25 cents. Uh, I know that when I make personal copies, for way of example, I put a quarter or a dollar or whatever is appropriate into the uh, fund for copying. But uh, what's the board's point? 
pleasure relative to perhaps amending the topping cost? I don't know. It's been 25 cents. I don't care what other people spend. Everything's going up. Inflation means that it should just go to 50 cents. Yeah. That would be one option. No, I, I'm fine with the 25 cents. I think I am too. Yeah. And we're doing it for them too. Yeah, they're not so, using I mean, it on their own work. Even a, even, our one, time even to do picking it. up, yeah. taking their thing, going over to the copy machine, mm -hmm. and running it, and even if that's ten minutes or whatever that mm -hmm. is, or five minutes even. I mean, that's you, you could break that down. I guarantee you, just just the time alone is worth more than a quarter. So, okay. mm -hmm. much less the machine and the paper and the whatever else that color and all that other things that go cost that go with it. There's no question, Tasha. My apologies for not having our somewhat dated, but somewhere in the office available Freedom of Information Act chart. I searched uh, a bit over the weekend and then with a degree of uh, uh, due diligence today searching for it, but did not find it. And I went through all of my folders and what have you, and I've seen it. I know I have a copy. I apologize for not having it available, but it is somewhat dated. The general premise is that we charge uh, under Freedom of Information Act our copying cost, uh, and then the time it takes uh, relative to the copying of materials, which is copying and paper at this moment. We're not talking about scanning and emailing and what have you, uh, but then we would put that uh, hourly rate on top of these things. That's my recollection of it, but I don't have it in front of me to quote. And I something that I will search for, and if we want to take a look at it on Wednesday, we certainly could. And I, it's my hope I will locate the uh, misplaced <laughs> copy between now and then. Perhaps the most relevant in the three I've mentioned is that, is there any desire on the part of the board to begin to charge a nominal fee for use of some of the township's facilities, such as the, let's say for example, the pavilion at the beach, where people often ask if they, if electricity At this moment, uh, I don't see any place where we charge for this. Yeah. Is there any desire to explore this further? I think that we have explored it in the past, and I think part of the problem it boils down to is well, we're in a different situation now, too, but we didn't necessarily have somebody who could police it or who would police it. Um, you know, we, we talked about like, I think a, like a, a deposit, that a refundable deposit, or um, a deposit with a nominal amount they can get the deposit back if they didn't destroy everything or, you know, whatever, but. Pay off or yeah, that kind of stuff, but. Well, the other thing, we'll work on something here to keep track of all that crap. Mm -hmm. about here I mean uh, I could see like a reservation type deposit where you're ensuring that you get the use of it but and then you could go down there and say this is reserved uh, on this day or something and put something up but I mean if so, you got a bunch of people down on the beach and you got a few friends that go sit on the tables underneath the picnic table underneath the, the pavilion I mean uh, you know I mean I can only see it like you're reserving it for an event or something that's in essence right. of where this is right. being driven from. Right. So I mean, I can see, like, if you had the Tamarack right. Pavilion and you got the the, the Sandy Bottom Pavilion, I, I think the rules have to be the same for both. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, I guess if you want to, if somebody wants to reserve it so no other public person can use it at that point, then I guess I wouldn't have a problem with having a fee for it. To, you know, and we do that now, though, without a fee. Right. Yeah. We put up a sign. So I guess I don't have a problem with. It. I guess what I'm saying though is I don't. I don't. I don't have a huge problem with that. Uh, I, I, I would be bummed out if it was a lot though. I mean, no. I would the one that comes to mind, if I may, is twenty five dollars uh, for half a day or for a full day or whatever, and 
that would cover incidentals. Um, uh, Scott Reed mentioned that you know he's very meticulous at Tamarack City Park and at the beach. Last year he had uh, help from uh, Mr. Jakey, who, uh, well, Jakey to differentiate from Aaron, uh, that helped with uh, beach maintenance. And there's a lot of time and energy that goes to be put into the beach last year, and uh, it was kept up extremely well. Same thing was true for the volunteers and Scott down in Tamarack City. And uh, to be forthright, it's an idea that he floated my name uh, very recently about have we thought about a nominal fee of $25 to cover, you know, that I'm sweeping in there after an event, I'm emptying all the garbage, bringing in, sometimes I have to make a special run if there's a lot of it up here. I was going to say just the garbage alone. And just, but these would be for people to preserve the pavilion, have it for, a, for several hours or a, an entire afternoon into the evening or whatever. And uh, the only thing that I thought of was we could differentiate perhaps if we chose to go forward with this between residents of the township and non-residents. Absolutely, that definitely came to my mind too. Because mm -hmm. a lot of facilities that are that are in certain townships, it, it costs it costs for non-residents to to use. Like no different than Lake Runeberg for you know, like yeah. you, you're a, you're a member or you're not. You know, yeah, I mean, right. it's it's like there can be a pretty significant difference after actually between those two. That clarifies a lot because what's going to happen if you start getting there too much? Are you going to charge? Non-residents only. You kind of got that covered. Yeah. If it if there's a nominal fee for residents, and we're not talking about entities within the township, if you have That's fire department as an entity. I think we have to clarify that. Yeah. Um, but if, if uh, someone wants to hold a birthday party at the pavilion, right, then they would pay a nominal fee. If they are not in the township, let's say it's someone, a great example from Hull, in Torch Lake Township, say, hey, can we rent your pavilion tent? Absolutely, but the rental fee. For non-residents is twenty-five dollars. It's ten dollars for residents. It's twenty-five dollars for residents. You can have it for up to, you know, up to six hours or whatever it may be, and that just covers our cost to, for power if you need it and clean up after. Well, it, it, it didn't. It'll instill a little bit of respect towards what they're, what's going on there too. Not like most people don't, but keeps people from getting too wild. I would think if you just start paying to use something. And you're going to have people from the township and for people of private benefit for bachelors. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. <laughs> Explore further? Um, yeah. I don't, I don't really is, have a big problem with it. Yeah, this is being the ideas and deciding you know, what's worth exploring. I think anybody that at our budget meeting does a pool party or whatever else, these, these, they, they all know that there's, there's usually a fee that comes with some of that kind of stuff. Not really, but uh, what's the board's pleasure? Can we entertain questions from uh, people if they're interested in a particular topic? One, maybe. <laughs> Not every topic. <laughs> Horst, please. Well, the question I have is if it's going to co cover administrative costs for $25. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just something you, know, you have to pay them for doing cleanup, but also you have, you have as a supervisor and then whoever is doing the uh, you know, the checking and cleaning and all of that, that's all, that all takes time and money. <coughs> a valuable point, the administrative time is negligible compared to the cleanup time. Uh, usually it's a call in, posting a time, uh, making up a sign or two that uh, goes down there prior to the date. And those are often put up by Mr. Reed, are they not? Mm -hmm. So it, uh, The administrative cost question. will yeah, actually yeah. go up. Yeah. If how, how often is that? You guys probably know more than I do. How often is that pavilion actually reserved? Often. I already have three reservations for the summer. I'm just curious. Yeah, so, so my 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 thought here is 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 the number is not necessarily going to cover all the costs. Maybe like a little subsidy. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think you're covering all the costs of it. Oh, no. No. no, not intended to. But it, to let people know that there are costs associated with it. I mean, there's other things. You look at some of these other places, and they start they're starting to ask for like. Insurance, insurance stuff, mm -hmm. and, and 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 some of these other things. In order, we got out of it. That's yeah. why it's part of why we didn't get it anymore. Yeah. Because it, the insurance amount was so much. Well, the you pavilion know. at Shoots and Ladders is a hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and that's just bucks a over couple there? hours. Yeah. yeah. For that one. Yeah. yeah. For a few hours, just a couple hours. And there's the other kink. Not usually kink. Because they do the work to use it, but you have to be careful on verbalage when they get into as many uses of that part. But they work for that. Yeah, they do. They they put right. in a lot of sweat equity for right. use of the field. Yeah, no, that's an interesting topic. I'm looking for itself. verbal. You know, when we write this out, we got to make sure. Oh yeah, I, somebody will say, "Hey, you're not charging them." <laughs> well, that's an excellent point. I have a meeting scheduled with uh, Mr. Sutherland, the coach, uh, early to mid-April when it looks like the field's going to be, you know, usable. Uh, so yes, I'm going to follow up and see what they have in the way of both uh, sweat equity uh, offers and are the resources that they may have to contribute to the continued. As he mentioned it last year. They've done a super job here last year. I'm yeah. really good about it. So I, I hate to yeah. say, well, I'm going to start to charge you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want to chase somebody away because we're no, losing exactly. a thing that we have that right. to be used. Well, yeah, and this would be uh, starting out with just people that are calling in to rent it. Just the parks. Right? The no. sense of exclusivity relative to the pavilion, wanting the power and stuff like that. General use is general use. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I think that exclusivity is the is the key here. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's if you want the right to have it and nobody else can use it or everybody else needs to shoo and get away, then, mm -hmm. then I think that that's the thing that that's the goal. that I can buy into. Right. We'll work something up then, ideally before uh, Wednesday, if not certainly before the the special meeting on the budget after the hearing next week. Uh, Anything else people can think of, just sort of under general miscellaneous fees? I just put down a few headers. I've got uh, reimbursements and a couple of things that I'd like to just run by the board. I think under the next category, like we move on. Mm -hmm. What I'm struck with under reimbursements are things like uh, travel, lodging, and meals. And I understand that we pay at certain times for meals and we do not pay at other times. Um, the mileage under travel is pretty much set because it's my understanding that we follow the federal guidelines relative to what is permitted. Right now, I believe that's 58 and a half cents yeah. mm -hmm. per mile driven. Mm -hmm. And my understanding also is that it is not from place of residence, but instead from the office to your point of business and then back from that point of business to the office. Is that a reasonable assumption on my part? That is pretty standard. Yeah. Right? Okay. I believe that's the case. Yeah. Repaged. Uh, lodging. Is there a ceiling on lodging? I don't think no. we have a policy on any of this, no. to be honest. Yes, yes. I think, yeah. And I mean, how can you when it varies from everywhere you go? Yeah. 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 Well, well, I mean, we could, we could city, say. Yeah. We'll only reimburse up to 150 yeah. and I mean, you can go some right. places during where. the middle of the week and it'll be 85 bucks, and then on a, on a right. weekend it'll be 200. Right, right. right. You know. Same room. <laughs> yeah. Same room. That's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. What really prompted me putting it on there and raising the question was uh, a couple meetings ago, I think I raised the specter of going down to the MTA conference at the end of April. Mm -hmm. But in looking at the costs, I'm going, uh uh, they're going to bring their fall and UP up here, and that's a whole lot closer, and frankly, a whole lot cheaper uh, from a mileage standpoint, from a meal standpoint, from a lodging standpoint. I think I got the lodging uh, when I went down for one night at, uh, in Harris at the hotel at the casino, it was well under $100, if I recall correctly, mm -hmm. and the least expensive place in Lansing was at about 120 plus gratuities and what have you, and taxes, and I'm like, holy, and you're not in the immediate area. Right. The nearest one to the uh, convention center off of Michigan Avenue was the Radisson, and that was 155 with a three-night guarantee. I'm going, holy Yeah, smokes. that's significant. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a reason B&Bs are doing so well right now, and Airbnb is doing <laughs> yeah. so well, is because of the cost of hotel costs right now, and especially weekend hotel costs are, are quite high. So, I, I don't know, I, I guess as far as this goes, we've always basically talked about this uh, amongst ourselves, amongst the, the group uh, prior to, um, like Steve used to go every year religiously. Yeah. You know, and 
I think he I used to grumble about it. I'm not going to lie. I didn't grumble about it. I grumbled about it. But uh, the hard part I had about that is that he would represent, he would go down there as an officer of MTA. The MTA wouldn't cover any of it. And I think that's the hard part I had. And so he would spend yeah. a significant yeah. amount of extra time down there doing MTA business above and beyond the some of the, the other uh, days of, of just conferences. And... Uh, and there would be no reimbursement for some of that kind of stuff Especially from MTA. Yeah. But he represented the board townships like us, and that was they wouldn't kick it at all. Yeah, they're not, and then and uh, you know we pay a, a fee to be a part of that MTA, and then you're not, yeah. and they're not covering it as a, he was an officer. So you're not covering you as an officer. I, I don't, I don't get it. That's an interesting thing. Um, so I, I, I really struggled with that yeah. on a yearly basis. Um, he usually came up with some kind of carpooling menagerie of stuff that uh, he usually ended up agreeing to. But uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, usually I, how that went. I see no reason that Mark can still do that. I, I'm not saying what he can't do that. One of us can say, what do you think? And he mm -hmm. say, well, I'll tell you what, we'll pay out of 300 or whatever, but mm -hmm. we can still do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I mean, if you're going to go down there and, and and uh, hang out for three more days and watch a Michigan State game or something like that. You know, which is, I'm not, I'm, I'm I would just, be on my own. You would be on your own, yes. So <laughs> The hard reality is that uh, the Escanaba one was excellent. If they're coming back up in the fall, which I believe there are, that, that, that they are, that's more than enough. Not that I don't appreciate going to Lansing, but I, to be very honest with you, I have not been east of Marquette since 2016. And I'm not but you sure don't miss it that much. Well, I really don't. I haven't been over the Mackinac Bridge since I think 15 or 14. So I'm, but when you're going back and forth two or three times a month, like I used to for four years, I, I don't miss it, but I also know where I would stay and the sleep in and to wake is like $89. Yeah. And that's where I'd be. Eventually. Yeah, and, and uh, like you said, we, I think, uh, I can see us putting together a policy for this. I know that Bob, for yeah. instance, um, you know, he has to run for that water conference, but he usually asks us about that too. You know, yeah, you, you know there's, we're pretty yeah. specific about, there's, there's not a lot of things that we go to. Um, uh, I think both, you know, Tracy and Krista did some MTA stuff a, a couple years ago and said you were gonna go, didn't you? Or didn't you guys, we're gonna go or something? We're, I think you guys were gonna do that. That was Judy and Mary. Was that them too? They went once too. I mean, I think we approved. So, oh. it it's, it doesn't happen very often that I don't that it that we have to have some kind of crazy policy. But I I, I can't see that we. Yeah. Probably well, case by case. I, case I don't know. The, the problem with the policy is you. I, I'd say you have to say in it like the the mileage thing. You, so we don't have to keep monkeying with it. You just have to say the current approved mileage by. Uh, yeah. By know, the state. State yeah. of state, state of Michigan or whatever whatever the whatever the current rate is and. and right. uh, and then as far as the hotel stuff goes, I, you know, and meals, that's always such a gray area. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a really tough one. I mean, even at, at work right now, we, we have a, I can't remember, I think it was a, a per diem type thing for meals of uh, like $45. Well, you can't even get a, a lunch sandwich right now. You can go to Subway for, and it's, it's cost you 12 to $15, you know, just for that, and much less stopping and, you think you can sit down and have a decent? Usually, when you're out of town, you're not gonna just run and grab something from the holidays. So you you got time. You usually sit down and want to have something decent because you're away from home. You're not gonna get something garbagey. And uh, well, <laughs> I, I try I not. I, the sentiment, but I, I try not to. And <laughs> I mean, the, the cost of cost of anything that's any kind of sit down meal at a, for a supper right now is you know 20, 20 to twenty five plus usually, right. unless you're. Uh, that's why I raised it. So I think case by case and looking at the unique situation that surrounds it, a lot of times conferences will have meals as part of the registration. They'll provide that. Mm -hmm. It is you know, dinner afterwards or perhaps breakfast, but a lot of places uh, provide a breakfast, even if it's a continental breakfast as part of the registration and the cost of staying there. So that's something that you know, I could factor in as well. But I, All I'm saying is, is if we're going to have a policy, I'd just like to see it be relatively flexible because this stuff is yeah. such a pain. We do pay other meals as well uh, that are part of township business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Elections come immediately to mind. Uh, it's something that we have done historically. Part of business. Part of business. Uh, just to even get... They did. 
get, I mean, I know get those they people did to it come before. In. They, but I was told yeah, by yeah. the county clerk, we are required to feed our election inspectors. So that has been in place for well, I mean, even since I've been here. Just that's to just such a huge just stressor, right? right? You don't Port, even know. Right? Forcing those people to work during those hours all the way to whatever and not give them anything right. is, yeah. Yeah. seems ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, they're from six in the morning until nine. Then you come back to the office and you can be here till midnight. Ten, ten thirty. It makes no sense to try to right. yeah. be a jerk about that kind of stuff. And because yeah. they, they're only helping you a few days out of the year. I mean, mm -hmm. be realistic. You're asking yeah. for almost darn near volunteer at that point. Pretty so much, yeah. you can't feed them. What are, what are you doing? Right. The next general category that that I'd like to bring to your attention are the water system. And in your informational packet are existing rates and what have you that we have in place. Uh, thought we need to discuss some of these things in light of current rates and what costs are going to the inflation and everything else and how we're going to go about adjusting it. I had anticipated with Bob being here tonight, but he's dealing with an issue up on M26 where we have a work in the system and has been working on that since yesterday. I think we're on the track to get those repaired. I know people have been up there, but I haven't spoken with Bob since uh, Where is that? this month. Uh, right up here on M26, not too far from Martin Collision, mm -hmm. uh, on the north side of the road, or left side as you're heading towards Mason. All right. Uh, but just to toss out what I'd like you to look at and give thought to, and certainly we can discuss anything tonight, but we have two systems within our water system and uh, you'll notice on the charts and the tables in there that some of the things haven't gone up uh, very recently I'll talk about Tamarack City uh, the systems in place now for approximately 10 years I'm looking at Don for confirmation that we started uh, probably slightly more <coughs> I think how fast that goes the administrative costs down there started off around thirty-five dollars, went to thirty-five. Do you have the increased one for Tamarack City? Yeah, that should be on that one. All I have was Dollar Day and Mason. Well, there's a chart that shows all right of the here. rates. But the one that just shows like when they were increased. Do you have that one? There is a chart that uh, shows rates. I do have that. It was part. It was like you know part it of these like ones this. that have the yeah. date. I did one. There's one for Tamarack City too. Yeah, I. Don't have it out there. I apologize. Do you want me to get yeah, it? Yeah, if you can get it, that yeah. would be helpful. I've got it in here somewhere, but I must not have included it in the handout. I apologize for that. Um, Tamarack City's administrative rates uh, gone up only twice from the original discussion of 35 up to 35.50, and then a number of years ago to 36. And those are costs that are intended, or rates that are intended to cover all the costs associated with operating the system from paying Bob for maintenance and repair. Uh, other things found on the billing for residents are, of course, the water, uh, the sewer rate, which is higher and been going up at a, uh, an appreciably fast rate in recent times. And though it may level off in the near future, it will not go down. Just the rate of growth will slow uh, in the not too distant future. But we also have to look at it separate and distinct from the sewer system because we are a billing agent on their behalf and reimburse them, you know, send the resources to them, uh, what they're entitled to. But we have to maintain the system and we have to operate in black. And we are probably getting increasingly close to the break even point if we're not already upon it. And we need to look at raising the administrative rates either in one lump sum or gradually over a period of time. So so you're yeah. saying administrative rates of uh, sewer stuff, or are you saying administrative rates of the water? Water stuff? only. Water started off at 35 in 2012, went up in 12 to 35.50, and then went up again, uh, thank you. Oh yeah, I do have this, but it's very on the back, I apologize. Um, 2012, 35 50 2016, it went up to $36. So that's there, that's not, the service fee, right? That's what I'm talking about. That's the administrative serve. That's the rate that covers administrative maintenance and debt retirement. Pardon? That's the debt retirement. Yeah, well, that amongst, yeah. that's okay. also debt retirement. Yeah. Yep. 
So that's everything that's charged administratively relative to the Tamarack City water system. The water is separate. The water, the water that you're being charged by Michigan American is is a separate fee, is what you're saying. Separate and yeah. distinct. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. There are four. So that's been going up as it, uh, all along. That has been going up steadily. It this has risen a dollar thirty from 2012 to present day. Okay, I thought it was more than that actually, but okay. Per thousand gallons. Yeah. The sewer rate is on a much faster percentage <laughs> and increase. And that will continue for a period of time. And I did get clarification uh, from uh, Mr. Karanen at UP Engineering. Uh, post discussion with him. I'll share that information with you if you like. A little more detail when we get into budgets uh, the next meeting and, of course, next week. But the uh, one thing that I found fascinating, I brought up the airport. The airport's uh, percentage of waste is not 2%, as we have been Old and led to believe, and I think was believed to be the appropriate level. It turns out it appears to be about seven and a half percent. So it is appreciably greater than and they've been feeding originally projected or estimated. So uh, I have that information buried in a folder. I'll get it, all that stuff pulled together by. That's Wednesday. an important thing to know. Yeah, That's and important. and the rate of increase. They've been trying to tell us all along that it's it, it's a little larger than in. Yeah, and it, 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 it has nothing to do with the need for additional storage volume and, and all this other it stuff. Causes, it just kind of causes the move to move. You add 7% to nothing, which was, yep. they weren't there at all before. And uh, They're apparently paying, you know, a legitimate share. Their rightful amount, if you will, but they're taxing the capacity of the two lagoons. And that is part of the variable that goes into the third lagoon, based on a conversation I had. But my understanding is, again, I'm going from memory, is that the original lagoons were built on an estimate without data available, and which makes sense. There was no sewer system down there before, and may not have been as large as they should have been originally. And that creates a capacity issue. I mean, that still brings you to the fact is how did, how did they how in the world did they get the airport into your system in the first place, knowing that they were already that at maximum capacity, yeah. without having to support additional infrastructure? And without letting the and now all the people are going to end up paying for that. that that's a hard one to swallow. It's really uh, hard to swallow. Well, we have two issues that are in play here. One is the capacity issue. The other is to underwrite the rural development loans as I understand them, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you have to reach a certain threshold relative to rates so we, you are be able as an entity, as we have experienced, to set the rate high enough to pay back the loan. So the rate has been going up to reach the thresholds. Once it gets to that threshold, it will continue to go up but not as, as, as fast a pace. But they have to get there to ensure that there's sufficient revenue coming in to underwrite the cost of putting in the enhancements, the upgrades to the two lagoons and the third lagoon. So it is a, a, a factor that we need to keep in mind here when we look at what we're charging our residents in Tamarack City. But the fact of the matter is that we haven't raised the service fee slash administrative cost debt retirement at all since 2016, and then we only raised it 50 cents. And we may have to look seriously at, say, incremental raises over a two or three year period of a couple dollars a year. That may sound like a lot relative to how it's gone up in the past, but with inflation at over 7% last calendar year, uh, costs are going up. And they're, you know, from equipment work. So I'm just tossing that out there to say it's something that we need to be cognizant of and need to discuss in earnest as we begin to budgets together for the coming year or the balance of the next eight, nine days uh, to prepare for this. So this is as much a, please be alert to this, please be aware of it, because I'm going to be crunching some numbers and have them ideally by Wednesday. I'm not certain as we begin to finalize budgets next week after the hearing. So how does the, how does the water system budget 
look at this time from the Tamarack portion? Uh, right now we're coming in uh, with revenue slightly above expenses once again. The margin is thin, but we are still operating in the black. Uh, based on Krista's work to provide you know, monthly charts to me to look at, I'll have all of those again available. I shared with water systems and had them in packets before, but did not bring them for reference tonight. But uh, we will generate enough revenue that it looks like to meet all of our expenses, but the margin will be thin relative to profit. So my next question would be, Knowing that you're on the thin razor edge and knowing that eventually you're going to have expenses like uh, you're at, what are you, over, over 10 years now? Uh, no, we don't have that extra fund to leave. You, you, you're not, you, you're going to have things that are going to come up though, yeah. you know, as things go along. And they're not even things that you're, you know, I'm not even, there, there's, you know, you're going to have to. You're gonna to have to start looking at hydrants. You know, things are gonna start. Right. The, things are gonna, you know, whereas they were brand new for years and you didn't have a lot of costs for maintenance. Exactly. Yeah, some, exactly. some of these things like uh, valves in the street. That's, that's why we're some of these it. things like yeah. hydrants. Uh, tr the truck, you know, yeah. eventually is gonna to have to get replaced again. Roof on a on on a on a water tank building. You know, things things like that come. You know, I mean. It, they like to say 40 year shingles, but everybody knows up here they last 15 to 20. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's just what they last, you know, and you're, yeah. you're at 10, 12 years in now, you're, you're, you're starting to, you're starting to be, need to be thinking about it anyways, yeah. you know, and we need to be thinking that there's money being put somewhere. And at our board meeting, we suggested we need that fund and that's why we're suggesting we need to raise that. So yeah, that's all I'm going with is yeah. even though you're in the black, I'm wondering if we're stashing enough away for, for our rainy day things that we know we're coming. We're working on the accumulative surplus. We don't have an answer for you yet. What I really would not want to see, like what I see in the Dollar Bay one, is where you're constantly starting to take from what we think is our rainy day fund and we're, we're, we're sucking it up really fast, you know, so there's... That's the next topic. Yeah, I, I get it, but I, I just want to make sure what I yeah. don't want to see happening is even though you guys are maintaining in the black, you're right there on the edge. Yes, we are. And I've said it about Dollar Bay is if you continually ignore it, continually ignore it, then you have to do the, you have to do the raise, the raise the rate and a big jump just to start covering maintenance costs and stuff. People get mad. You segue very nicely into the next one, which People is get we very mad. We have to look at water rates in Dollar Bay, Woodside. Mason as well. Well, what's your, what's your, what are you suggesting here, I um, guess, in terms of this Tamarack race? At, that's, at this uh, moment, I'm just throwing the idea out. And what is the, what is the, what is the, what is the uh, Tamarack utility board suggesting? What is it? What are they, what is the Tamarack we water board? We haven't talked a lot about it, but we've discussed kind of what Mark's saying. This may have to go to from 36 to 38 in a couple of years to 40. I mean, a lot of times for for our we're not for what we're looking at here, we're talking budget. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times we get a like on a we, we get input from from our let's say our water manager mm -hmm. has has direct input on what the budget should be. Mm -hmm. A lot of times he'll go through the Osceola one for us, you know, and mm -hmm. and and set what he thinks it should be um, with 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 the supervisor. Um, and uh, I'm just wondering, you know, I'm thinking that that our our utility boards should make sure we, we're weighing in on some of that. I think uh, so we, we've talked about yep, it. We have. Okay, because I mean, a lot of times you send out a letter to fire departments and these water boards and anybody, you know, insurance companies and all these things, so that when we ha when we hit these these budget meetings, we're we're making informed recommendations. We do have some limited feedback. That's why we plan three work sessions. Okay, well, I guess where I'm going is, is yeah. we should get some feedback. Yeah. I think this is this is one of them that, anyway, that requires feedback. Our, well, we've got there for, but the longest time the budget wasn't, you know, it was hard to read the numbers because everything wasn't caught up. Well, we at least we caught it up. And then we started Agreed. realizing, crap. Yeah. <laughs> We're barely pouring water here. Yeah. So Funny. that's when we start talking about here is that. We're not in a crisis, but there is a sense of urgency. Not with this one, we're not. Yeah. yeah Dollar Bay is a different. That's a whole Okay, issue. so I, I'm good with this as yeah. long as we're going to get some input from that board so that the recommendation that's, you know, 
somehow there can be an informed recommendation after all these budget meetings that we have something that we, we have some kind of plan. Yeah, there and needs and to be some kind of plan. If I can segue in, what we'll do between now and next Tuesday is that we'll prepare budgets for the coming fiscal year that will look pretty much like the amended budgets or the budget for the township for this year. But it'll have all kinds of background information in it, knowing that when we get into the first quarter of the new fiscal year, we're going to be amending. Because we aren't closing out the fiscal year until the 31st of March, which is just days, one day before the new fiscal year begins, we have to have these things in place before the end of this fiscal year for next year, even though we haven't closed out the year. The state's aware of that. They talk about it in their MTA, in their handout, uh, in their manual and uh, guidebook, talk about getting budgets and knowing, in essence, that you have to amend them because you haven't closed out yet. And they suggest using current year budgets as your template. These discussions are what we need to have so we all understand that things are going to have to change early on in the fiscal year where we're going to be approving new rates effective this date, approving new costs effective this date, et cetera, et cetera. And we don't make till after April. So yeah. we don't disclose. I mean a lot of times we used to do this on one day on a Saturday. Yeah. This meeting. It wasn't it wasn't a multi meeting thing. We just do mm -hmm. we just get some donuts and we come in here and work for six hours on a Saturday morning or something like that and do all these things. But a lot of times we had these recommendations from from these entities you know so all I'm saying is it'd be good if these this group could, could make sure they, they, they have a plan and give us a recommendation of some kind here uh, in the very near order we'll meet on Wednesday we'll meet on the 6th okay that's the next meeting that's in April there's not a Tamarack City Water Board Utility Board meeting until then so we're gonna have to make a choice for them well what we will do is we'll approve budgets into the year and then we'll amend based on the all right and even though we put letters out to people and in deference to Horst, who is uh, in the chair position uh, in Tamarack City, is that our budgets are ongoing dialogues at our meetings in one way, shape, or form. And there's an understanding of, of where we are generally amongst the members. Uh, you've got several senior members there, very much like here in Osceola. But Osceola presents different problems. Uh, I'm not done with this one yet. Okay. There's one other thing that I think needs to be talked about, and I know you don't want to talk about it, but uh, the sewer rate we can do very little about. The sewer rate is the sewer rate, and I know you have it on here, but the sewer rate is the sewer rate. We can do very little about it, with the exception of one thing, and that is the cost that co the cost that cost the township. Right. We're looking at that too. We're looking at that. Yeah. That's going to be a thirty-eight cents. You're talking about. I'm talking about the, the cost that that is actually. Yeah. You know, borne by the township to to do the work that uh, a private company comes in and charges six five, five six yeah. times what we're, we're we're getting. That's there too. You know, so and I'm not saying that we need to do that because just like the water system, like just like Michigan American Water and, and the and the and the the private water system, I'm I'm all for trying to keep things reasonable. So I'm not saying that we we match. A private company because I, I wouldn't want to do that with our with our own water I wouldn't want to match you know just because they're charging eight dollars and something a thousand doesn't mean that 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 down here in Dollar Bay we should be charging eight dollars a thousand too because it doesn't cost us to make that that's not what we're we're not in the business to make money that's not what we're doing um, we're just in the business to make sure we're we're, we're not in the red covering our costs yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. we're covering yeah. costs. So, that's, all, that's always been a key for us because yeah. when you talk to the and I know it's going to raise your rate, and I know it, it has, yes, you know, it up. sucks, but I, I, I just because cannot they, get they on board told with us whatever we raise that, we will raise our rate. And I, I can't get on board with <laughs> doing it for free for them, though. I can't well, do no, that I, either. I agree. I, I agree. can't get on board with that. You know, you could be like you could be like some of the entities and say we're not doing it anymore, and make them hire somebody to do it. That's what I'm saying. So that's that's right. and I don't think that we need but to that do that. That cost is going to be borne by the ratepayers in Tamarack City. But then you say it's either this or this. Well, it's the two choices. Cents a month, is it not? That's what we get. Yeah. Yes. We're, we're getting 75 cents a month, not the 38 that's identified. And Krista clarified that at the last bill. Yeah. So is that on the bill, when they're billed bi monthly, is it $1.56 on the bill? No. So we're billed five. monthly. Every year. You're billed monthly. monthly. Right. Yeah, it just shows up as 38 cents. I do an invoice and bill them 75, 75 cents, cents per customer. Right. Every month. Yes. From the township's And they pay us. 75 they cents. send us a check 
And we're the rate payers, we and we're paying, we're 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 paying half the bill. But there's more to it, I feel, than just saying we have to just cover oh, no, Krista's it, time. It, I mean, there's, there's a piece of equipment there that has to be continued. The software that we have, yeah, it's great that we have it, but it costs a lot of money. To, it costs a lot of money to keep that software, and part of that software is being used by, I would say, if you did it by billing, maybe one fifth of all of our billing is the sewer rate. If you were to say all of our billing together, if you take all of that cost, water system, new mason sewer system, Tamarack water system, and then this Torch Lake Sewer Authority system that we're billing for, I don't know, is it one fifth of the cost? I mean, they should be bearing one fifth of the cost to keep that VSNA software or whatever that, that up. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what it should cost. If, if there was a separate entity that had to come in and do it, they'd have to have that software. You'd mm -hmm. have to have something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, it's not just time on task. There's more to it. That's why I keep saying that the office space that you have set up for it costs too. And that mm -hmm. and it, it can't be, well, you're you can't be just saying a hundred dollars to do this for them every time or, or whatever 75 cents times 100 and, 40 equals it, it, it's not a hundred dollars it's not it's not a hundred dollars it'll never be a hundred dollars and that's why it costs way so much more for other people to do it you not to identify the cost over all of our costs i said that last year yeah. and we haven't seen it yet well so. we're it, it's in the works okay. that's what we're trying to get but at. this is where i'm going to yeah. and I, I think it's a number that can be arrived at just by making some basic you know this is the piece of the pie that you have you know when we have when we're doing billing Here's the piece that we're doing for them. Yeah, That's I, the piece of the pie. I find it a, a little bit, if I may, in the, since we're in discussion and you're not here, a little in Congress that ours is 75 cents and the private entity that apparently is doing it on behalf of the sewer system for their customers were in Lake Linden. No, it's the um, it's the other township over there. Was that the- Schoolcraft? Schoolcraft Township, Okay, yes. Schoolcraft. Six dollars mm -hmm. and change yes. per customer per month. No, I think it's, and I'm not, yeah, not saying that's, 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 that's an additional. That's, that's some other debt retirement. That's a for on that six, I think. It's six, but it's uh, by month worth. Five. So it's three dollars and twelve cents per month. That I'm not saying we got to get the three. No, but I'm if just, you got a dollar or a dollar and a half. I'm just saying, yeah. look at the piece yeah. of the pie that it takes. Yeah. That's why. And let's be fair. That's why we're doing let's this. Let's be fair. Yep. We want to put our because that software money. costs money. Yeah. Or make them pay for part of the software, like we do for each water company rent for the building like Perfect. the water companies do. I don't I know mean, if they'd be willing well, to do that, but every cost center right. should have a charge. Right. Well, you, don't, well, you, know, you don't have to go directly. Right. You, so you I'm just, saying you, you could do it that way. In here anywhere. Right. You know, so I'm saying you don't want to have to break it down. The cost of, going going the 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 call the cost the cost of keeping computers and keeping <laughs> yeah. working printers yeah. and right. keeping all of these things is we need to know so I, can figure, I can figure that out, no problem. It doesn't just have to be exact. I, right. I just want to see a percent of the pie. Yeah, I can do that. I can mm -hmm. easily do And then that. take that percent of the pie, and hey, if 75% cents covers it, okay, I'll shut up. If a dollar is necessary. If a dollar I'm covers it, dollar. then I'll, I say go to a dollar. That, that's all I'm saying here. I'm not saying that we need to say, oh, a dollar, let's get two. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. We need to cover our costs. I do. That's okay. what I think. Because right moving, now... Moving it... Osceola Water, if I may. You guys are on board with it. I know. I gotta shut up. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we got it. You, we you got made it. your point. <laughs> and, and, and I said this before once, though, and I got it. It went a whole year now. No, we're it working went, on it. Okay, okay a whole year. Every meeting. Osceola Water. <laughs> Please look at the rates. Well, you, to be fair, you had asked for time. I did. This is I a was looking for I, I was asking for time on task. I'm saying, look. This, I can easily figure this out tomorrow. This is better. That's fine. Time is immaterial. We want the cost. We'll start there. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. I was, I was going to try to go through, yeah. dig it deeper, and, and maybe this is a better way. Yeah. Let's just figure out what it's costing. And it is, to be we'll fair. I, I, you know, I mean, it's got to be fair to you guys, too. Yeah. Some, some redisc that, that to figure something out was maybe not fair. To push ahead, $34 <laughs> per month for water in Osceola is, inside the system is not going to work going forward. We can't cover costs as it is right now, right? We're not. I don't think we're covering costs. We are able to cover costs, and we may not have to dip too far into that uh, go forward balance that we approved a while back, the sixteen thousand to defray costs and goose necks up on them. But for us to do what needs to be done with the water system to include goose necks for at least five residents, which is part of the plan, 
And we're not going to be able to keep the rate at $68 for every two months. Every two months. We're going to have to look at rate increases, again, incrementally, to uh, cover costs and build a fund balance for looking down the road. We've got Bob's out there working right now on a water line break on M26. And that's going to fall. Costs are going to fall inside this fiscal year because it's March, and it's going to be probably going to be a good bill. Winter time, winter time stuff is yep. not going to be free. Mm -hmm. And they've been at it since mid morning. So uh, I'm just throwing that out at this moment as an item, just like the discussion we just had. We need to have the same kind of thought process as we begin to put the budget together together for the water system. I mean, another thought process here, part of this too, is to say within a year or two, we're probably, or maybe even next year, we, we're gonna wanna do another section of road. You're gonna wanna end up, you're gonna end up having to do all that stu other stuff that, that goes with the section of road again. Mm -hmm. You know, that there's that was one little block. We got <laughs> lots of blocks to do, mm -hmm. there's a lot of them. And you can look at the cost for that one block and say, okay, there's 20 more of them, or whatever the number is. It's quite a bit. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot. At five a year, we've still got roughly 20 years of goose nets to do. Mm -hmm. So that's, we did what? Not nine, going away. Nine last year. Nine. And, yeah. Wow. And uh, revenue is going to have to come out of the system in the near term. Or be I mean, I know you, you guys are talking about the ARPA money or whatever, but I, I feel... One of the things I feel I, I struggle with that one is, is, and I've said it in the past, and especially with some of the relinquishing of it, is, is that uh, you guys can, can can think differently on this. But if you spend it all on Dollar Bay, that there's a lot of other township out here that maybe not getting. You can't spend it all on the Dollar Bay water. We've already worked at it on a percentage yeah. basis. Yeah. Yeah. We've broken and then, down uh, increasing. I I still feel like you use that for something that that you're not normally going to get. You know, you, you you can't get some other way. I think that roads and roads and water systems have their own revenue uh, sources, and, uh, and uh, when they have their own revenue sources, they can, they're there to take care of themselves. So they're going to always be there. They're, they're, those needs are always never going to go away, whether you get a one-time landfall or not. So, yeah. I'm going to take advantage of uh, what Aaron just said. I'm going to segue into that revenue just to alert everyone to what it is and what it would look like on a precinct by precinct division based on population. And I estimated the amount at 190,000 to be technical, it's closer to 190,500, I think it's 467 or something like that. But precinct one, which is Tamarack City, based on population would get $53,200. Precinct 2, which is the Greater Dollar Bay area, would get $93,100. And Precinct 4, North End, would get $43,700. If it is our decision to divide it up generally on precinct lines and then look for single purpose or badly needed projects that these resources would help cover or cover in their totality uh, in those areas. So that's just to put that out there, no decisions obviously have to be made tonight, but I want you to think about that, see if it makes sense. We have until, I believe, 2024 uh, to submit plans. All of the resources are not in yet, are they? Mm -mm. We've got half We've got of them. Half, yeah. got half, half of them. and then that one little And one little back payment back. because there was an adjustment. There are two townships, I believe, in Houghton County that turned down the revenue. Uh, one footnote I'd like to add, and you can pursue it uh, at our next meeting or at the board meeting, we do have a request from the Houghton County Road Commission to give serious consideration to de dedicating some, most, or all of that money to road repair. Uh, they are not receiving any of the ARPA or COVID stimulus money uh, directly. They would have to get it either from the county or from the townships. And. Uh, attended two meetings now, both a planning meeting and a meeting with the Houghton County Chapter of MTA at the end of February on this topic. Uh, Kevin Hardy was there and asked townships to consider that. Uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna say something right there. Please. For ninety three thousand dollars, we would barely be able to do the block we just did, <laughs> and we would not be able to use that money for something else that we will never be able to do again. Uh, and that's 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 my sales. Plus, we have a, a significant load tax, and we're not sure exactly how much is left in there because we all these. These people want it. us to do it faster than we, they can approve a, a, a bigger millage. Yeah. Right now, our millage is uh, been working very nicely for us. Hopefully we can leverage some work again. I'm more than in favor of working with the township again on what you, I thought you did a great job last year of making the biggest, biggest bang for our buck. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that, that that money could be used for something yeah. that would never be, we would never be able to do normally, uh, whereas that would cover another block. Thank you for the kind words, but it was actually all of us. There was a lot of discussion. Now you did a lot of that. You did a lot of that negotiation, Mark. So I, I, I just want to make sure that you get the credit for doing some of that. I appreciate it. I do. Um, but yeah. thank you. That's nice of you to say. Appreciate it. But that's the revenue that's available there. So please, uh, identify. If the idea makes sense, we can affirm it down the road, conceivably as early as next week's budget meeting, at least as a format going forward and there are a lot of one-time issues out there uh, while we're on it uh, another informational item uh, we have a vacant apartment I'm not trying to detract from the discussion on water but uh, just to well, quickly, budget item. We just, you have to budget for these things we have a, uh, a vacant apartment apartment number one and uh, Krista and Tracy did some digging found information relative to rates Right now, our two-bedroom apartments are both paying $300 a month rent. One's on the, uh, actually, uh, they're both on the second floor? No, mm -hmm. one's I'm sorry, one's on the first floor, that's number one. Yeah, I'm sorry. One on the first, one on the second, and rates have not gone up for rent since 2015. Yeah. And then the uh, one-bedroom apartment is uh, 250 and that's on the second floor. Uh, I'm uncertain as to what our rent covers inside. That's a great question. What is it utility? What do they water. get as a part of that? part of it, but they pay for electricity and heat, right? No, we cover the we heat. We cover heat, too? We, we pay the heat and the water. water. They have to pay for power that and is a, internet. That is an astoundingly That's good deal. Right. Yeah. yeah. How is it empty? <laughs> my, question, my next question is, is, how is it empty right now? Because there should be out. a... And she just moved out, and Scott yeah. just got improvements yeah, done. Including heat. Yeah, I was going to say that normally when somebody moves out, usually we try to go up there and, and uh, paint wow. and, and do whatever you yeah. got to do. He's doing that. He's, do, he's taking care of that. Scott yeah. has done two walkthroughs uh, and said that uh, the previous tenant, the old snitch, has left it in really super shape. Uh, they cleaned up uh, after they left, uh, vacated the building. And he said, the only thing I needed to replace uh, were the drip pans and the range, and he's already done it, and I think we came to about $11 to put new drip pans. So the painting and carpeting, nothing needs to be taken care of up there? There might be some stuff that needs, needs a little, might need a little touch-up, touch but he up. said it's really kind of moving red from his standpoint. She just used it as an office. Yeah. She didn't, they yeah, did she not live in there 20%. Yeah. And actually, the last six plus months, she was at home making sure the Skynet internet was working yeah. for right. the house. So she wasn't using it at all. Yeah. 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 So the rent is extremely cheap. That's pretty if you, cheap. If you look I would be interested to know totally in the right. community what what some of these uh, duplexes and you know apartment stuff is going for right now. Eight. Because I said, I significantly, I think yeah. it's significantly Eight. more. To a thousand. Especially when they have all a Some chunk of the utilities. If you're getting water and they don't heat, part no, of the they, they don't include any that's, separate that's, water. That's a couple heat. hundred dollars right there. Mm -hmm. Electric oh. heat and water are never included in that, hardly anywhere. Especially electric anymore. heat because you oh. you can't control that person. Why would anybody move from there? That would be yeah. <laughs> square footage. I don't have. I don't know. Small. Uh, I don't think that I, I'm not necessarily saying we have to make a, a fortune off it, but I think we should not be undercutting uh, other um, landlords in town either. Right. I don't think that's that's a good thing to do. Uh, they usually get mad about that when a when a public agency starts undercutting private sector stuff. Well, I didn't tell them what they're getting. Oh. Well, oh, crap. So
think mm -hmm. generally speaking, I think we need to raise rates. We need to look at rates to see where, where the marketplace is, look at size conceivably as an issue before. If we're providing the heat and the, and water, the water, right there, $34 a month. What are they paying for? Electricity and internet. And Internet. Well, they're basically living there for Pretty a good deal. Bucks. Yeah. Plus, they're electric. And I think I'm going to move That's like what my taxes are for the year. <laughs> I'm ready to move. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Downsizing. Downsizing. Yeah. Downsizing. 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 Foods parking. I do like the, the thought that it, you know, that's it's a good place for, uh, you know, like a singular elderly person or something mm -hmm. like yeah. that. That, you know, we're yeah, not we're not we're right. not pushing them out of the community. You know, we're but we need we still need to be realistic here. I think we have to cover our costs. And I'm not sure if we're doing it. Not even. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so, so you guys are gonna know. run something up for that, and yeah, we're gonna who's gonna do that? We'll take a, we'll take a look at we'll rates. Talk, yeah, I guess yeah. we can. Yeah. Rock paper scissors, five hundred bucks. Is yeah. that what we're saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, did you pick the number out of my head, or what? No, I don't know. That's what no, I was saying. No, immediately no, thinking no, at the top of my head. That was my, in my head. So the same number. We have a, a tenant that's been in there for quite a period of time, mm -hmm. and I think if we talk with our tenants and let them know that there are going to be incremental raises over the next. Uh, three to five years or whatever, and here's what they're going to be every year. And this is what your rent includes. It will include the water. It will include the heat. It'll include garbage pickup and disposal and what have you. And plowing. And in the winter, plowing, because it's doing that right now. All of those things have jumped dramatically cost-wise from inflation alone over the last year. Gasoline, as we know, has gone up about 50 to 60 percent in the last year or so. Labor the point, but we're quite low even for the square footage, and everything that we're putting into the apartments is takes away from our. I've never been up there to look at them. Are they, are they decent? Are they, I've never been in them. They're, they're relatively cute. small, but they're, small. they're, they're like, ideal for a couple. They don't have laundry, person. right? Mm -hmm. There's no laundry units mm -hmm. there. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. But okay, we'll, <laughs> we'll have some ideas. And we have a target figure that the two of you mentioned if we may. I don't know, I was just something that popped in my head. No, you know? that, I think a doubling might be a little hard to well, move uh, towards, right. but yeah, uh, if, like, we, if our objective is to double over a period of time, yeah, then we can move incremental. So. Well, the other thing that a decent rate gives us is the, the ability to be picky and choosy about who we put up there. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we go too high, then we have to take whatever we can get. And uh, I think we... I think we want to be a little picky and choosy about who's up there. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't think I'd want to hear during this meeting some thumping music no. up there right now. No. <laughs> no. Very true. I might. Yeah? <laughs> it might keep it, us away. It, it depends. <laughs> uh, back to uh, Osceola Water pretty quickly. Um, I think the consensus is that we've got to build our rate structure. So give it some thought. I mean, we're at $34 a month right now, and that includes 4,000 gallons. Just not sustainable uh, going forward. But give some thought as to where you think we should place it. Why did Dollar Bay not do per gallon like Tamara City does? Do you know? Per gallon? Yeah. Because standard standard when we went to, at the time, and it, it still is to some rate, uh, some degree, when UP Engineers does a lot of these communities, uh, and I'm going to put it on. They do it with the RD stuff. You needed a certain amount of water, guaranteed. That whether they bought it or not, that you you needed you needed certain amount of revenue to cover administrative costs. Mm -hmm. So you have your you have your 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 administrative cost section, and you have your 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 structure section. And the structure section gets paid for automatically by a section of that. The, the rate, not not the water per thousand, mm -hmm. but then you have your administrative costs that like 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 some of the stuff we're talking about, pay our water sectors and stuff. And you need a minimum amount to get that. Mm -hmm. So then you use a well, everybody has to buy at least this much water to get that. We're just, we're set at, at that, you know. I mean, so okay. so, and a lot of lot of places in with RD 
for three or four thousand gallons. That's just just what it almost that was that was I bet you seventy five percent of the communities up here are all are on that same similar rate structure because everybody gets their money for these projects from the same place. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think Tamarack is a little different because a different guy did it. Gotcha. Yeah. To put it bluntly, different different person did it a different way. Okay. So. I think they still pay at a gallon, a thousand gallon rate or something like that, but it's, it's just there's, it a, there's a minimum. Yeah, there's it's, so it's 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 similar. It's just not quite the same because it's different from just sure. seventy five to eighty percent of the communities up here. Yeah, and we weren't dealing with the township either prior to the new water system. We're dealing with Michigan American. Yeah, water you guys didn't have it. We weren't involved at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the hydrants were an add on because they were dealt with separately. Level. Well, we did have those. The township had those. Had the fire hydrant. And there was a there was a fee for that somehow. There was some kind of a there was some kind. Of, we had revenue for that. There was a revenue source for that somehow. I think maybe it came through the fire departments. Where did mm -hmm. that come from? Because we maintained the two dams. I know. I know that. I know that PCI paid for a chunk of it. It was all part of the law system. That was yep. And there, so there was revenue, and I think maybe even the township had to kick in on that. Um, I don't remember how it worked. But it may have been part of the millage relative to the uh, fire department, because it was 5.23% down there. It, it, was it it's hard for me to say where that, or, I can't remember place? anymore, but you're right, but it was a lost system. system. It might explain why it's so confusing with the, we pay you and then you pay them yeah. and then they yeah. pay yeah. us back, yeah. right, yeah. with yeah. the rental. Yeah. yeah, those are things we'll take a look at too. But yeah. Uh, just please give it some thought because we need to, to look at this system and figure out what our costs are. We're, we've already filed a letter to apply but have not moved on it and will not move on it until a timeline, which is 2024, relative to a water line between Mason and Tamarack City. It's going to be interesting to see how that works because one of the things you have to consider for, for rates is that in order to get some of these grants, you have to have a minimum, a minimum rate. Yeah, that's just minimum. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. As an Osceola Township water user, that minimum rate is a scary looking thing it's compared to what I'm paying now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's a scary rate. It will um, be a, an annual bump for Tamarack City. It will be dramatic. For Dollar Bay, Woodside, and Mason. And Mason, we have to bear in mind, just took on the sewer. And that rate structure is in your handout. So we, we want to try to be cognizant of, of hitting them real hard mm -hmm. with a rate hike, too. So Yeah, I mean, they're, they're absorbing a lot as it is. They are now. They are indeed. So just another variable to consider. Okay, right. well, I'm just, I'm just throwing out there that, the, that the, the top rate up there is. I don't know what it is for our community. It'd be interesting to know what it is. Did, did Emmett tell you what that was? He did not, not yet. I thought he was, he's probably working on some information for that, but Emmett Bazorn yeah. is looking at some of that stuff and uh, he will probably know what that is. I had talked to Andy is. about it like in 2020 and he thought it would be more in the neighborhood of 50 a month. I mean, that's a, that's a big raise. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, and that's why we kind of like. And that's why that we can't thing. get money for our, you know, that's why it's hard to, Look at stuff like our our pump system and our right. and and our and our stuff that we're looking at. I'm still hoping that something comes out for reimbursement on on, our, on this um, the water lines for the, the lead stuff. Well, the you know, yeah, I'm still hoping there's still re, there's still that there's still conversations out there at the mm -hmm. state level that mm -hmm. that they're talking about that. So I'm still hoping that that comes yeah. out. And we already have our receipts for that stuff sitting there. So. Well, to stay with that for just a moment, if I may, in my conversations with Angela Yu, she said that the problem that they have at Eagle relative to lead pipes and goosenecks is that the rules they have to follow were written in the 1990s and did not take into account this issue. And she said, even though everybody talks about lead as a priority, particularly after Flint, the rules that they're operating under are antiquated. And she said, even if you put in a first rate application for funding from Eagle uh, relative to your goosenecks, you're not gonna score very well because the rules we have to follow don't 
keep lead pipes as a high priority. And they're putting, trying to put pressure on the legislature to update the rules to be more cognizant of the issues around lead and copper piping. You know, holy smokes. And she said, yeah, you... I still don't understand the copper part. I don't either. Because copper is not... <coughs> I don't either, but... Copper is not... Copper is actually good for you because it, it, it disinfects. Yeah, maybe the solder used to hold the pipe well, together. Old, old, old solder. Nobody uses lead lead solder anymore. So I'm not so sure lead, that lead I don't free. have some in my house. Just yeah, okay. Okay, okay, I see. That may be worse. New, new systems don't yeah. have that in it, yeah. though. You know, I mean, the copper piping, the soldering did have, me at one time had lead. Yeah. Not to the extent that they used to have with the black piping. You know, I mean, some of that stuff, the was, they had big crucibles in it. Yeah, we are just buying new copper pipes every year. So yeah. That's brand new once again. So I mean, they say even if you have PEX, <laughs> that you should have at least one stretch of copper on it just to, yeah. just for disinfection purposes. Okay. Well, anyways. Yeah. So we've got water system things that we need to look at. And there are other types of things that are in your packet, uh, <coughs> handouts. I want to reference. First of all, as we begin to put the township budget uh, together, we did have uh, approved back, I believe, in November, uh, a suggested salary wage structure. Uh, we used it for planning purposes. We have not implemented any of these rates. This was based on um, looking at something that uh, should be in their effective 12 uh, 01 21. This is for planning purposes only, and this was going to be the template we used to put together the coming year's budget relative to salaries and what have you. The rate of inflation at that time was thought to be around 5%. We looked at that as a variable, we call it a, a cost of living adjustment to raise our bases relative to- Smoke that right out of the water. It is now <laughs> north, well, on an annualized basis, it ran at 7.9% in February. It could have fooled me when it goes from eight dollars a sub to twelve to thirteen right. dollars. Yeah, a sub. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. that's the other variable that's right. out there. Point well taken. I have worked up a second sheet, but it's not final yet. At six and a half and at seven, that would tweak these up slightly. And I had intended to present those in more detail for you on Wednesday as we begin to discuss the budgets. But just these costs, you know, I would would require. Uh, hard look at the very things we've been talking about, some of the fees, some of the charges, and whatever, so we're staying within budget. Uh, please bear in mind as we look at salaries, there were no increases across the board this year or last year, so we really haven't had any increases since, what, the 1920 fiscal year at the earliest? And we're going what year? To, so 19, 19 slash 20? 19 yeah. slash 20, so we're looking at three years, really. Uh, going into next year without uh, an increase in really anything. So this is a template that I'm working from right now. I will also have a comparative cost for you at six and a half and seven percent. Let me ask you something. That, do you think the state is going to divvy up seven percent more money to us based on inflation? No. Revenue sharing is <laughs> revenue sharing has gone up. Has gone up dramatically uh, and is scheduled to go up again based on state receipts, and it is a considerable bump, although I don't have any figures, that they're identifying it as a significant increase. And as we look at uh, figures for the current fiscal year, uh, we are running relative to revenue against costs considerably ahead, but we have to pull out the variables, and that's with Tracy and Crystal there, they want to share all that. So anticipated, anticipated revenue sharing is up this year? It's up this year and will be up again next year for us, because it's up in the current fiscal year at the state level. Okay. And it is scheduled to go up again in the 22-23 uh, state budget. I mean, a lot of the last few years where we aren't raising salaries and stuff like that is because revenue sharing was uh, was not was not increasing. We weren't even sure of it. It was, yeah, <laughs> some, so, yeah some, <coughs> some instances we were worried that it was going to take a massive hit. So, um, you know, like a 10% hit or something like that. That situation know. appears to have changed. I don't mean to crystal my, my accurate my statements that it's up this year it's and up. it's projected to go yeah. up next year. So stuff like 
freezing salaries for three, three, four years, we can be we can be a little more fair with this previously um, discussed wage draft here. I think we can have a good discussion about that. Yeah, uh, we've approved this for planning. These were the figures I was going to start using to fold into the budget. Uh, some of them I think can stay the same. Others I think deserve a tweaking. I mean, if you look at what the total inflation rate is from 1920 to now, instead of just looking at the seven and a half percent this year, I suspect it's probably closer to 10, 12 percent than. Over the last three years, uh, 2000, 1920 to present day, they were, they were less than two percent in the first two years. It was yeah, really it was low, bad. low. But I mean, you add it up, a couple years added up, four percent plus plus the seven plus percent, you the, know, the six to seven. Yeah, we're in double digits. Yeah, probably. 10 at a minimum, maybe 11 to 12. And we're talking about a maximum of maybe seven uh, in proposed measure. Do we have any idea how, how much we're talking in terms of revenue sharing? Do we, do we? Mm -hmm. uh, where's our last financials? You said part of that was from uh, the previous year, but we got that. Yeah. I don't have that information. I, don't know. I mean, if we knew the revenue sharing from last year and what we think it might be this year, that'd give us a percentage of to work with that we could say this all adds up to X. I can figure it out, but I... You, you know where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. But like this, this increase adds to X and our revenue sharing is gonna be this. Y, are we, is X less than Y still, or? All right. In the draft, April 2021 to March 21st, 2022, and Tracy ran last year's approved budget figures, just so I'd have something to give to you tonight Ooh. to adjourn figure uh, we show state revenue sharing at 268,113 but I think you indicated part of that was from the previous year yeah uh, there came were two, that high. two payments that were yeah for the yeah, that does not sound right. but they it's still in north of I believe 200,000 and we had budgeted 150.5 yes because I, I, I know that our budgets have typically been less than 200 yeah and it's it, we're we're smoking that. 200,000, I think. That's said, right, yeah. And she said a couple of those payments from that are from the previous year. Yeah. Right. So, that, so that's why it looks like 238 is really rough. Yeah, we got to be careful about that's that. That's why okay. we're, we're trying to ferret and pull all that out so we give you an accurate figure, ideally by Wednesday, if not certainly by the time we get to So the, the question I would have is say say we're up 50, let's just say we're up 50,000. Yeah. I mean, Net I don't know, I'm not saying I want to spend it all on this, but I mean. No, net increase is proposed, wouldn't it? What, what, no. would, what would this come to, maybe, you know, I, I guess? Less than half of that. Yeah. Probably. I mean, that seems fair. Yeah. That seems fair. But we want to, I want, we're doing our best to get you accurate numbers by next Tuesday, so you got a budget that this is defensible. That you've got the revenue to support it, and we're comfortable with the figures. But we needed to start the process tonight and share what we have, but treat it all as a work in progress. You, you were suggesting BC Water pay the same as this, then we decided. Yeah, I am. I'm, that has been discussed at Tamarack City Water. I think you know, we have so two advisories same. with the same responsibilities, same activities. The only difference is size of population. Right? Oh, no, the reason it crossed out is because they were, it, it suggested should have been 50 and the yeah. impact would have been 50. It was yeah. backwards. Oh, no, no, it was backwards. So the arrows went That's why it's crossing. The arrow isn't crossing anything out. It's, it's reversing them. I think that's good for a $2 yeah. raise yeah. on this type of. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it always baffled me why one got fifty, one got thirty-five. But then what we have time. is we have a standard rate for our advisors, Meetings, yeah. uh, regardless of locale. And there are some, for example, the board of review is operating under the current budget and is getting paid at the existing rate. And next year it is suggested that that go up by a few dollars, just like some of the other hourly rates would go up. And none of this looks extraordinary. You know, I, mean, I think it's just but like it, you said, if you're half of the upgrade in revenue, you're in good, a good spot. We'll be more definitive by budget uh, approval time next week. It's a lot of a lot of tasks we're throwing at you guys for a week's worth of time here. Well, some of it's already in, in process. We're still so good, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the last thing I really wanted to bring to your attention tonight, you got some in your handouts, is that the charges inside our ordinances haven't changed since 11. And uh, there, there's two things. I'm, 
I'd like you to think about for our next meeting based on this. I look at some of the comments. I cut it off. I know. As it pertains to water. Did we get one? There's two or three stapled together inside your handout. Yeah, they're, they're double sided. Yeah. And they're just samples of different ordinances with the rates are all the same. And they all date back a decade. So well, didn't we just. What I'm. We haven't done anything to the charges for people in violation of our ordinances. I'm suggesting a couple, three things for your consideration. Uh, one is that we look at increasing the rates by amount to be determined that we look at the feasibility of not declaring a holiday, but people that are past due, particularly on water, we uh, look to settle with them, uh, either by coming up with a percentage that has to be paid right away, and then they have to go 12 months, for example, without falling behind and paying their bill uh, to get final forgiveness. Otherwise, if they fail to make their payments on time over that period in the full amount, they, it would revert back. Things kind of like that, and we also allow them a schedule. I mean, this is this is basically for our ordinances based like flight ordinances. Is that oh, that, that's three different ordinances, all with the same rates. This is the burden. Yeah, one's yeah. Three. So all I'm asking you to do is look at the charges. For example, fifty dollars that hasn't changed in a decade. And that, you know, as I shared with someone, as I filled up my gas tank the other day, a fifty spends like a twenty did a year ago. You know, here's a fifty dollar bill. Thank you for the pocket change back filling up my gas tank and it wasn't empty. So I, I think we need, uh, if we're going to look at our ordinance and say we need to do a rate change, we need to get people caught up, perhaps we'll have a, a grace period where they can get into a plan, they can pay a large percentage of what they owe us, we wipe the slate clean, and then we look at, say, Labor Day and say, all right, going forward, we need to understand that we're going to be much more vigorous and ordinance enforcement, you got to stay current, otherwise you lose this, etc. But you know, we're carrying some money on the books. We're I know this is leading, obviously this is, you gave us these three ordinances here, but I just grabbed ones that were a single page and easy. But I know to you're, yeah, I know you're leading up towards the, towards the water ordinances, so. Um, well, water I think we need to, we need to talk about, because right now we still have people that are willing to settle. Those are the ones that are your, as far as settling on a, on a burn ordinance one, I don't, you know, that, that, that's I not happening. Mean, that's that's really water is the one where we've got outstanding you know, bills, some very small, some extremely large, and one, you know, commercial one here in town that's long since passed you, but we've got to have an enforcement clause. That you've got this grace period to, to, to clear this up, but, uh, you know, if you don't, we'll have to look at enforcing the ordinance and conceivably shutting your water off. Well, I mean, I, I obviously one of them is, is here, and obviously the other unpaid bill is this Horner, which is a significant bill I'm, I'm starting to hear. Is it not? Probably. Yeah. I haven't looked specifically, but probably. If we were to look at the size of the bill that we're talking about, Richie, and the size of the bill we're talking about at Horner's, I would say that they were on an order of magnitude of probably 10 at least. Are we talking 10000 $10,000 versus a thousand dollars? Oh God, I don't think they're that high. Barn corners is it? Uh, not for water, I don't I don't think so. Gosh, I would have to look. I'd have to look. I don't know. I think they're pretty far behind. Richie, is it like they range in the neighborhood of 14? Either 14 or 17. I don't know. I'm oh, sorry, I don't memorize their well, 14, 16, it, it sticks in my head and he came in and said, you know, I, I want to clear this up. What can you do for me? I shouldn't have to pay all of it. So I said, well, we'll kick it around. He said, how about 50? I said, uh-uh. Uh, <laughs> but if we say 75, I think they'll write us a check tomorrow. And right now, we're carrying it as a receivable, right? I mean, and, again, we looked at this with the with the other board, yeah, and people were not interested in entertaining this. And well, I know you want to get it off the books. but I want to get some revenue in. I don't think it matters because I don't think they're ever going to pay it, and I don't really, I, I don't, I think that mistakes happen and it's never going to come back anyways. I don't think that, like the Horner stuff, you right. try to put them on the hook. But if and you I have someone that says they're willing to pay seventy five percent of their bill right now today, just seventy five or seventy five, seventy five dollars or seventy five percent. No, seventy five percent. Fifty percent. He was offering. Yeah, yeah. and I said no. 
Even if okay, you that's different. 60, yeah, no, no. I, I, and I'm, so I, I hear you. I hear you. He's willing to pay. No, he's pay. willing to pay. He wants to sell. So if mm -hmm. we said right now you can clear the whole thing up for 75% of what you owe us, and we get a check in 24 hours. But I'm asking you to yeah. think about it, not to just, you know, decisions tonight, just think about the concept, right. because if we go to these and say... I mean, that's not letting a guy off the hook. No, no, no. 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 We're saying, and then you got to stay current for the We're next 12 months. months. Otherwise, you owe us the balance. Right. you got to think about this? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm asking you to do, because it's already quarter I'm, to I'm, seven. Now, and now that I hear what you're saying, saying I, Yeah. I'm, like, there's a residential... There's a residential... I'm not, I'm not necessarily... Yeah, oh. I... Right, maybe I, to pay. I might be able to buy it in this a little bit yeah, more. It, it's the concept of we want to clear all the bad debt, get everybody on the paying <laughs> basis, and then have uh, a, a modest <laughs> sanction out there if they fall behind. You can't do that. We already forgave debt. You can't fall behind. you got to stay current for at least 12 months, and then that 25%. Well, the, the one I have a hard time with is the Horner one because they, they're never going to not fall behind. They, they don't. Right. So if you give them, give them a break, they well, always fall yeah, behind. Yeah, but we gotta get something in because right they now they always fall behind. They yeah, never not fall behind. But but this could that's a different thing. I feel yeah. a little bit than the Richie's different one. Different than Richie's, yep. where yeah. it's happened one time and it. I just right, I just know and, and no no offense to Hunter, they're 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 a, they're a big business in town. You know they they're trying to make money too. They're just right. trying to get by. They right. they got struggles of their own. Yeah. Problem is you can't do it here and not do it there. Yeah. Right. So but the problem with them is is that. It's we give them a fifty percent pay cut on, on a on a bill, which I think is more. I, I'm pretty sure that's a pretty significant bill. Um, but you you could, you, I may be wrong on that. One. We'll try to have some numbers. Oh, I can print the delinquency. No, let's go by. I thought I thought it was up there, but maybe I'm wrong. But <laughs> we couldn't we do it too like a, a post COVID thing, you know? Because I mean, there were yeah. definitely people. Yep. Okay. Is our water system affected by that? Okay. Where it's a one. This is how we're going to handle this. This we're one time. We're basing on a COVID it's thing or something, and because I, I just fear that you give them fifty percent, and then they're just always like that. They're always, they're always. It's the same always. It's mm -hmm. never as long as they've been on this board. They've always never been up to date. Never. But if you tell them the seventy-five, and they don't make payments regularly for a year, you're going to get the other twenty-five back. Yeah. Then we say you, it goes back to all us. We tag it back on. We tag it back on if you don't stay current. Uh, it, it's not. You, you pay, let's say 75. So you owe 1,000, you pay 750 right now. Right. Okay. We accept that. Bill's clear. Now you have to stay current. You have to make your payments on time for a 12 month period. Okay. If you don't do that, anytime during that, that 25% goes back on your bill. Or right back to where, right we're back to where we were. Mm -hmm. But we've gotten okay. a 75% payment. And I'm pretty confident, for example, using the store as an example, they're going to be on time and on schedule, and we're going to give them a, a considerable break under unique circumstances, and you tell them. They've never you, been a yeah, problem at you, all. You right. pay your bill on time, and you're good. You, you know. I mean, let's be honest, anything that, you know, the, with, with him, I think he, we just have to make sure that he realizes you can't ignore those exactly. leaks. You can't ignore stuff yeah. like that. We can, uh, people in town have to know that. You, you, you're not going to be allowed to ignore that stuff. We're trying to be understanding. We've got a clause that permits it in our ordinance. On the other hand, it could happen to any one of us. Yeah. It could. It could happen to any one of us. The only difference was if it happened to me, I would pay it because it was my fault. Right. I wouldn't let my toilet run for a month either. Like, I know that they did. Krista graciously pulls mine out of the mail and puts it on my desk. It's a reminder. like, here's your water bill. So, okay, so it just again, I guess I, I guess I'm, I'm not a, I'm not as opposed to that as I was coming into this uh, that 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 arrangement. Well, we'll flush out some figures and show them to you on Wednesday. I think. I'm only one person on this. And why can't no, why no, can't I, you be more with people that always pay their bills on time and say, you know what, you've always been current, blah blah blah. This was an unfortunate circumstance. We'll give you a break here. But when you have people that are always late. Habitual, habitual why should that we you, have those Why there. should you give them a break? I mean, I Agreed. guess because we want to get so I, I, money. So that's why I think the 12-month thing is interesting mm -hmm. because I think right. that that yeah. that rewards people for doing things right. right. I mean, we have that. we yeah. have a significant amount. Like, you look at that, that, that delinquent list. It's always the same people. Mm -hmm. It's always the same people. It, it's not rarely, I mean, like, Richie's was never on it before. Mm -hmm. no. Before this one thing. So that's a that's a different deal. Like, right. you know, I right. guess. Well, okay. So 
I'm not as opposed to that as I once was, Mark. I, 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 get, I, get, the, I get the plan. Well, let's, we've got a lot of things to think about, and we're meeting again in about 48 hours to plow more definitively into the budget. And uh, unless there are some other things that people feel we need to address right now, I'm a little cognizant of the time. I think I've addressed enough for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> what I'd you always like do. to do is I, I've You gave us enough work. <laughs> sure I sure did. did. I'm sorry. Uh, I do have some budgets. Uh, I can help you with anything. Let me know. Just I will. <laughs> yeah. Here are. Uh, yeah, I can help. Take this a seat is what that does. Tracy and Krista pulled together relative to the township. There's one for each of you on there. I did not pull together anything. And then. It. Here are uh, double-sided, what we've already approved. Uh, these okay. are the Osseo, here's the Osseo of Water. Take one of those. And then here is the Tamarack City Water. Again, they're double-sided. These are the amended budgets that we use as templates. Uh, again, I'm not looking for discussion tonight, just so you have these figures sure, to look at. I'm going so to for the next meeting. Oh, Pardon? This is, this is to look at for the, the next meeting. The next meeting where we go into the budgets in more detail as we start there. Can I go down the line? I don't know what you're saying. Do we have two Tamaracks and no Osceola? Let me look here. I got an Osceola. I got one of each. Everybody should have one of each. I've got some extras to if you'd like them as the meeting concludes. So what we're looking at here is... Is this this is the most current budget that we think that we're at right now? For the two water systems, these are the amended budgets uh, that were approved. A couple these were printed months. in February. Why don't you have yeah, to print yeah. one from today? Well, no, no, it has nothing to do with the, all of these. Oh. Is the budget it has well, nothing to do with? We, it's the budget column that you pay attention to. And these were the and amended ones. But these are the amended yeah. ones that we've approved. Well, we want, yeah, we want to, if we want to look at next year's, we want to be looking at what our amended budget is. And yeah. these and are amended. The water the system water. budgets are amended. These okay. Are done. The budget line. That's what you want to pay attention to. Yes. Okay. The Osceola right. Township only <coughs> puts costs against the budget. As best we can figure at this moment. Wow. So that's Wait, so we bu we budgeted 175 last year. Or let's see, let's see. Oh my goodness. It's going to work here. Osceola Water, for example, Tamarack City Water is 122.530, and it moves some lines around. You can see the things that were lined out. Osceola uh, Water went to 231.8. Adding sixteen thousand dollars of carry forward money to address the costs associated with the goosenecks. That's, and that's because we had to take money from the from our reserve fund. From our reserve fund to get to pay for it. To, keep, to carry forward so revenue, you know, excess money. So what do we spend here? Let me go back to the bottom here. But expenditures through the middle of February were one seventy five. But these are passed out for the budget. Well, one seventy five is. That's not expenditures. Uh, revenue, excuse me. Expenditures year to date were at 191 through the middle of February. So there's a month and a half left. But you, these are the budgets that have been approved. The expenditures and the balances are uh, Is there not a bunch of bills the out there still, you think? Or? I, mm, Anybody I know of anything? bills today, but nothing out of the ordinary. No Julio bills in the wings out there or something? Well, there will be. Well, He's there will be right out now. there. He's ditching. He started the other day. I'm trying to get some of the water. Oh, so, yeah, there's going to be some. Yeah. In addition, if I may, uh, next week, and I'll have material for you on Wednesday, we have a request on behalf of the Verga Telephone Company from Wagner Consulting for uh, a cable system for the community of Dollar Bay from the Farragut Telephone Company. And we have the assessor's contract to review and approve. That will all take place on the 29th. The material will be distributed to you on the 23rd. And there will be additional information that's, that you have in your packets or whatever you request from Tamarack City Fire Chief relative to funding for next year. We also have a request for ditching. All of these are, are budget items, but you'll get the material at next Wednesday, this Wednesday's meeting. Questions? Concerns? Yeah, that's okay. I got it. It's going to be an interesting several days. 
Uh, board of Review, just to alert everyone, will meet in final session tomorrow. It is a labeled a follow-up meeting. It is not a, a meeting where petitions will be heard. Uh, the assessor left around 2 o'clock, as I stated earlier, a little after, on Friday of last week, and asked that we meet again just in case there are any things that require action. So the board will meet tomorrow afternoon from 3 to approximately 3.30, perhaps a little bit later. Uh, in the final session. Are you meeting here? We're meeting okay. right here. I think that's what the I fire call it. That did work out, but it was at times a logistical issue. I think I came back here at least twice, if not three times, to make copies of things. Mm -hmm. Were you just know? looking for a bigger space to work on? We needed more room. There were a number of people that did come in, and they just wanted it to spread out a little bit more. And it worked out very well. So, thank the, we'll thank the fire department of Long Island, certainly. Thank Brad and others. Uh, but I thought Laura came and grabbed my printer. She did come and do some work. I know she did work. She left me a note, but my printer was moved. <laughs> Is everybody comfortable with the schedule? Uh, item six, uh, we'll be meeting on Wednesday, again at 5.15, primarily to look at the budgets and the material we discussed tonight as it pertains to the budgets. Yep. And then the hearing is scheduled for 5.15 on Tuesday the 29th to be followed by a special meeting of the board to approve next year's budgets. And the notice will be in the newspaper on Wednesday. So okay. if anybody gets the newspaper, can you please check to make sure? Does anybody get the newspaper? I get the paper. I'll double check. Make sure she it's said there. it'll be there. Can you bring? Can you bring a copy? Yeah. I'll bring my paper. Yeah. Yeah. They usually send me yeah. a copy, but sometimes they don't. They're a little sketchy over there these days. Thank you. Does Thank anybody feel you. there's anything else we need to discuss tonight before we call for public comment one more time and adjourn to next? John? Hey. <laughs> you can quiet. kick me anytime, you know. <laughs> I'll, get the, I'll get the I'm trying to put one of these meetings in here and it's yeah. just not playing with me. Not playing fair. With that okay. in mind, we will provide one more opportunity for public comment. Anyone present would like to offer input for the board's consideration. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to do so in a moment. I ask that you identify yourself and you'll have up to three minutes after you identify yourself to present information for the board's consideration. Would anybody like to offer input? Uh, I would like to comment both as a citizen and as a sewage authority commissioner and a water board uh, committee man, if that's all right with the uh, board. All right. Um, first of all, on the uh, on conferences, um, I, I might want to take a look at the state's guidelines for for uh, for meals and uh, lodging. Uh, the um, Sandwich is the same for them as it is for you. Um, the, but even before the pandemic, the large hotels in the conference cities uh, were raising their rates. Even in the states, they had trouble you know, finding, finding accommodations at times. So it, so it's a problem. Um, on, the, on the water and sewer um, thing, I'm wondering if you want to take a look at the costs or break out the cost on, on the what we call the water secretary position and see whether it would be a good idea to see if the, the muni building the private muni building the private company that is um, uh, doing the for the um, schoolcraft township uh, building see if that cost versus us hiring someone and paying them for you know for that part of the job and then the other question is, do we need that person for other things besides water and sewer billing? You know, I think that's that's the important question to, to look at. And mm -hmm. then, you know, decide if we should get uh, higher rates for billing for for um, you know both both services. And and that way people are able to uh, you know make a decision on that. Um, it's not clear. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, um, then of course, uh, I think it's a good idea for us to keep the Mason sewer rates as current as possible because of the uh, situation that if they get used to, you know, long rates, then there'll be the usual protests, uh, you know, for unfair rate raises and all of that that could possibly come out of it. So, um, I'm, uh, I do have a question and, um, 
which you don't have to answer at this point, but you're, uh, are, are, you're saying that we're getting increased revenue sharing is, and is that tied into the fact the uh, home values are, are increasing at this point, and that, that affects revenue or not? I'm not quite sure how Michigan, Michigan does that part of it. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. I think um, there's some lag on that because the even if your home value raises up drastically within a year, there's a that's what the whole five percent max thing is supposed to take the spikes out of. It takes the spikes out of the changes in that stuff somewhat. You know, or you, your your home may may be worth you know twenty percent more now, but your still your taxable rate is only is it can only go up by a maximum of the five percent. So. I'm not sure I would say that, that that system really works towards sudden increases. It's, it definitely doesn't, uh, it works in the other direction too. You know, you, your home value could go drastically down and, and your taxes can only change by, you know. It, right, right now, what, what it does, it kind of buffers the ups and downs. It buffers, yeah. That 5% that, that rule creates yeah. a buffer for okay. sure. All right, well, I just wanted to raise that. Um, there's that's my understanding, and you guys can correct me yeah. if you're wrong, but I, that's the way I see that system working. Okay. There's a buffer in there. Right. The other thing is there are two election uh, petitions out there now. One is a constitutional amendment, which would basically reinforce uh, the system we currently have and, and would not increase costs to, to the municipality. If the other petition, the one secured by both petitions, would be approved and the other one would not. That would mean that uh, we could not accept the uh, uh, the church that, that's up on Highway 41 as, as a voting place. Uh, there would be increased work for the clerk uh, because of, of additional um, requirements that are, are in that particular uh, petition mm -hmm. that would become law if, if it were uh, if they were to get the uh, not necessary signatures and the um, the one the petition to uh, keep the system as, as is and enhance it slightly would lose then then we would be stuck with the the petition that's uh, called secure my vote which basically is voter suppression and election subversion so I just want to point that out as a possible problem um, question about road commission. Um, I, I would wonder, can we keep our, our cost within the millage so we don't have to uh, you know, raise, raise rates at this point on, on, the, on any road repairs that uh, Kevin Hardy was asking for? So I just wanted to raise that issue. Um, you have about 30 seconds left. Okay, salary and uh, wage. Uh, structure. I, I'm, I'm in agreement that sh there should be some increases. Um, let's see, maybe. Oh, um, fees in, in, in ordinances, I think, should have some kind of inflationary uh, clause in there so that we don't get stuck with the, uh, uh, you know, having, having a, something that was passed 10 years ago and it's going to cost us money to enforce that ordinance. And uh, we'll give like you a few more idea. seconds. Yeah, I like the idea of the forgiveness on the water thing because it, what we really are doing is making it a training and learning tool for that particular customer who, who's not willing to you know, adhere to the rules where most other people are. And then the last thing is uh, if we could have virtual meetings with the ability for public comment uh, broadcast out, out to the public. I think it would increase uh, public participation in a way that it doesn't do to, uh, it doesn't do tonight, which is uh, myself and Cindy. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Thank you very much for your comments. We'll close the second public comment session. Is there any other business that the board feels we need to take up at this time? Hearing none, a motion to adjourn is in order. Ms. Gardner, is there support? Support. Ms. Cool, we have a motion and support to adjourn. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. aye.
Hold same sign, motion carries, we stand adjourned.